Food changes us in one of two ways. It'll, it'll uh, change us either directly, the way new 5GC turns on inflammation, that's epigenetic fun function, but also the food we eat changes the microbes in our gut, and they will change us uh, in a number of ways by changing enzyme perme uh, membrane permeability uh, and Many of these or, uh, organisms produce neurotransmitters that get into our brain, change our mood, change our perception. Food is very powerful. And yet, because our specialist colleagues don't recognize it, they're all stuck like the blind men trying to understand the elephant. The cardiologist sees the atherosclerosis and the, and the gastroenterologist sees the Crohn's and colitis and the dermatologist sees the psoriasis and the rheumatologist sees the lupus and the endocrinologist sees type two diabetes. Um, and they're all puzzled. What's the etiology here? And none of them, because their training has been totally bereft of the awareness, they're all treating the effects of their patient's diet, yet none of them really want to look at that. And I tell the young docs, when you open the door of the exam room, it's never just you and the patient. It's you and the patient and the patient's daily diet for the past 10 or 20 years. That's determining what you're going to see uh, in this patient's physical status. And that gives me great concern, therefore, to the folks following the paleo philosophy. Uh, that's just all, basically, it's a meat-based diet with some vegetables. People improve initially, they do, because the paleo folks uh, say things I agree with. They pull out the dairy and the oil and the flour. They say, no caveman ever ate any of that. And you'll get healthier. You'll get leaner. You stop the dairy and oils, the flour products. You'll lose weight. That'll improve your blood pressure and your lipid profile. Yay. But I say, do not get seduced by these early beneficial changes. As time goes on, you keep packing that intestinal tract full of animal flesh. Uh, this, in my estimation, opens the door to an epidemic of colon cancer. What this is going to do to the TMAO and all that is going to do to their risk of heart attacks. They're going to get strokes. Now, the leaky gut they're going to get from the endotoxin will set them up for autoimmune disease. All the fat they're eating is going to block their insulin receptors. They're going to get type 2 diabetes. The microbes they spawn in their gut from a meat-based diet is going to invade the gut wall, give them colitis and Crohn's disease. And I showed you what AGEs, uh, especially from a meat-based diet, due to the arteries of the brain, are the, are setting themselves up for an epidemic of dementia. So I don't care how good that steak may taste in your mouth. After a while, it doesn't taste that great. But do not fool yourself that this is a healthy way to eat. I think it's the, the pit yawns open uh, with these sharks swimming at the bottom of it. And for people who continue to think that we are, uh, that we're cavemen, uh, acting out the mighty hunter fantasy. Uh, that's not who we were. That's not who we are. Now, it turns out that a diet based on whole plant foods can, uh, can actually reverse these diseases. What an interesting concept. Disease reversal. I practiced medicine for 30 years before anybody put those two words in the same sentence for me. Uh, but it's, it is the hottest topic in, uh, in lifestyle medicine today and should be common knowledge among all our colleagues. I sure didn't know it in my first 10 years of practice, but I spent my first 10 years frustratingly uh, chasing numbers. Uh, I watched their, my patient's body weight go up, their blood pressures go up, their sugar levels, their blood went up, their inflammatory markers go up. Their, their, the dosage of prednisone and insulin I would prescribe would keep going up. Uh, and they kept and they got sicker. They got fatter and sicker. And I get calls from the from the ER that Joe just had a stroke or Mary's having chest pain. And I began to feel like a complete failure as a physician, a complete fraud. And I came to understand why so many doctors in their practice are leaving uh, because medicine is so unsatisfying if all you're trying to do is manage their chronic disease. Well, my head got changed about this on a number of uh, levels uh, throughout my medical career. The most important jump happened when I joined the medical staff at True North Health Center in Santa Rosa, California, about an hour north of uh, San Francisco. Uh, and there at True North, uh, we have uh, the steady stream of American walking wounded coming in with all the classic diseases. Uh, but it's a residential place. They stay there for weeks. Uh, they can say they're just for a weekend if you want, but we encourage people to stay two, three, four weeks or longer. Uh, the pricing allows that. 
Uh, and while they're there, we don't raise their doses of medication. We actually feed them a diet based on whole plant foods, you know, oatmeal and fruit for breakfast, lunches and dinners are colorful salad, hearty vegetable soups, big plates of steamed green and yellow veggies, lovely curries and stir fries and uh, no oil stir fries uh, and, um, and soups and stews, lots of fruit for dessert. This is the food stream that we would pour, or the patient would pour through their body meal after meal, day after day, week after week. Well, the changes we saw there were nothing short of spectacular. Now, as the days and certainly as the weeks go by, the obesity begins to melt away. It doesn't magically vanish overnight, but it begins to melt away. And the arteries uh, begin to relax and die a little bit, and that lowers the blood pressure. And so you start getting them off their blood pressure meds. The uh, doctor, my joints don't hurt me this morning. Wow, it feels great. They have their first good bowel movement in months, maybe years. Uh, that certainly makes them feel better. The folks with the type 2 diabetes fine. They can start reducing the uh, levels of insulin and uh, metformin. Folks with the psoriasis and the eczema, the gee, you know, my skin's starting to clear up. The asthmatic, the asthmatic folks don't wheeze so much. They're all sleeping better. Um, these are the changes. Here's a, a, a typical uh, patient that that, uh, uh, that typifies this, at least. This is one of Dr. Furman's patients, actually, on the same basic program. Uh, Emily, I know her, a uh, lovely person. She uh, uh, started the program 100 pounds overweight on two medicines for blood pressure and on insulin. 11 months later, on a whole food plant-based diet, this Emily turned into this Emily, normal blood pressure, normal blood sugar, off her medications. I asked the medical students, what greater gift could you want to give to your patients to, than to help them achieve this health transformation? Isn't that why we're going into medicine? Or you just want to manage your chronic disease? You want to manage your obesity and manage your diabetes? You want to cure these people. Uh, why, why are you really going into medicine? It's a, uh, it's a golden opportunity for all of us. So, so we see these dramatic improvements, these dramatic reversals in diseases. But the question for today's lecture is how does this happen? Why does this work? Uh, what is the mechanism? Show me the science. So let's examine some of the possible mechanisms. So here we are, the patient is still back eating their standard Western diet, the cheeseburgers and buffalo wings and pepperoni pizzas. And here is the red tide marauders that flood through their tissues, uh, through all their cells of every meal, meal after meal. When the patient finally reaches that point, so I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of being so obese. I'm tired of being sore. What do I have to do? The doc says I need to go plant-based. Okay, I'll go plant-based. And they finally make the commitment to jump in onto the plant-based train. And the, the meat and the dairy and the oils and the sugar stop. And the steady nourishing stream of salads and soups and steamed veggies and casseroles and stews and soups, as I just showed you, start pouring through their tissues. What happens? Well, the first thing that happens with that transformation, making a boots-in commitment to go from an animal-based diet to a plant-based diet, has this effect. First and most profoundly, the red tide marauding campaign stops. Respite. There is now time for healing to happen. Every cell in your body, every tissue in your body knows how to heal, but it can't do it. It can't get those mechanisms into repair gear if we're constantly upsetting the system with more fried animal muscle and, and fryer, French fried fryer oil. Uh, that's got to stop. And once that happens, the molecular marauders are replaced by a steady stream of whole plant foods. Let's look at what this does. First of all, this is now a high water content diet, all the soups and the salads and steamed vegetables of water. And that now has water in the bloodstream and the water becomes less viscous, the less the blood flows more easily. The, um, the, the fluxes of water that are now flushing through the cells flush out uh, molecular contaminants. And as I said, the blood viscosity goes down. It's a more free-flowing bloodstream. Well, that works very well 
because at the same time, all the dark green leafy vegetables here are increasing the production of nitric oxide in the arteries of the, in the walls of the arteries. That lets the arteries walls dilate just a little bit, but that's enough to, to lower the blood pressure. The pipes are bigger in diameter now, so the blood pressure goes down. They can start getting off their medications. But also now the, those slightly dilated pipes now let this less viscous blood flow through more easily and it surges of blood carrying oxygen and nutrient pour through the capillary beds, pour through the brains, uh, bringing nourishment and removing waste from tissues all over the body. As soon as one pulls out the animal flesh and subsists on plants, then you've pulled out the arachidonic acid inherent in animal fats. And that's the main driver for inflammation. It drives prostaglandin 2 production. Well, you pull that out. And now all the fats in the diet are coming from plant oils in, in the whole plant foods. And many of those fats are in the omega-3 family, and they are anti-inflammatory. So with that one move, you've changed the entire inflammatory balance of all the tissues in the body. How profound is that? Now, the, the free radicals that were, were, filled, were filling the tissues from the fried foods and the sugar eating and uh, other causes, um, all these colorful green yellow vegetables have antioxidants. They quench free radicals. They don't happily donate electrons, and they, they, they satisfy the free radicals need for electrons. So they quench the free radicals. ROS is reactive oxygen species. Those are free radicals. Um, well, you quench them, so that lowers the oxidative stress in the tissues. That is such an important uh, factor to work with. When you change the food going through the intestinal tract, you're going to change the microbes that live in that intestinal tract. If you're eating meat and dairy, you're going to spawn a population of bacteria from the bacteroides uh, phylum. And these are pro-inflammatory. They, they irritate the gut wall. They promote cancer growth. Well, you pull out the animal flesh, and now you put down all that lovely high fiber resistant starches from the beans and the fruits and the vegetables. That's going to summon up uh, the beneficial microbes, the Prevotella microbes, um, whose byproducts are anti-inflammatory and they stabilize uh, gut walls to uh, uh, reduce the risk of, of GI cancers. And also, as I mentioned, because the Prevotella microbes uh, put out byproducts like serotonin and norepinephrine and dopamine, uh, these are feel-good molecules that get into our brains uh, and people say, gee, I feel better since I went plant-based. That's not a placebo effect. That's a gift from your GI microbes that also change. When you stop eating the fat of other animals, your own blood lipids are going to improve and become less atherogenic, for sure. Uh, the, the oils in our diet, the fats in our diet, work their way out into our skin oils and determine our body odor. Well, there's the animal fats that, as they oxidize, give the uh, pleasant aroma of the Green Bay Packer locker room at halftime. Uh, well, many guys especially notice, gee, since I went plant-based, my wife says I don't smell anymore. Yes, that's true. Uh, um, then it's a sign that the skin oils are generally getting more uh, health-promoting, and that's one reason uh, why skin conditions, uh, eczema, et cetera, often improve. Uh, hormone levels improve. The cows are all pregnant in the dairies these days. So the milk, the dairy products have estrogens that increase man boobs and breast cancers and uterine fibroids. Well, you, and plus the cow's milk is baby calf growth fluid. It's full of IGF-1 for the calf. Well, you, you, those cause great imbalances in the body. Pull that out. Hormone levels will, will normalize. High protein diets that people seem to think is a good idea is not gentle with the kidneys. You eat a high protein diet and all those amino acids in the protein slam into the kidney filters, the glomeruli, and they force them to go into a state of what's called hyperfiltration. And uh, that's stressful on the kidney filter membranes. And as the months and years go by, it damages them, leading to chronic kidney disease. Uh, the, the, the mucus in the lungs becomes thinner and less viscous. The asthmatic folks don't wheeze as much. The white blood cell counts start going down, but people don't get infections. Uh, they, uh, uh, the white cells count goes down normally because you're not pranging the bone marrow with endotoxin three times a day. So the white cells go down to a normal low level, which is where they're supposed to be. 
This is just some of the many changes that happen when one goes from an animal-based diet to a plant-based diet. Uh, just let each one of these sink in. And when you look at all of them, when you ask yourself the question, what changes in the body when one goes from an animal-based diet to a plant-based diet? The one word answer is everything changes. The entire physiology is different. The entire uh, oxidative stress state, the entire propensity towards fostering these diseases uh, has changed markedly. Uh, do not underestimate how powerful it is to go to a plant-based diet. <laughs>